Hey, what's up, guys? This is Zhong here. So, and today, uh, let's take a look at uh, 1,292 maximum side length of a square with some less than or equal to threshold. Mm. So you're given like a m times m by n dimension 2D array here and an integer threshold. And it asks you to return the maximum my maximum side length of a square with a sum less than or equal to the to the threshold and and the return to zero if there's no such square. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a, a pretty obvious, right? A brutal force way will be uh, we try all the uh, we try all the possible uh, all the possible length, okay, from zero to to the minimum of either the m and n, okay, and for each one of them, we uh, we basically we will see with with that length, can we find like a a square with that length whose sum is uh, meets uh, is equal or smaller less than the threshold, okay? But that that will be like uh, basically that's gonna be uh, what the 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 length is. I mean, we we can also try that, but I think that will be a little bit slow, right? I mean, a, a better way is by using the binary search. So why we can use binary search, okay? Because first it asks us, ask us to find the maximum side length, okay? And and another another uh, characteristic, I mean, for this for this like a two D array is that you know all the elements are are positive. I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, here. So all the elements, all the numbers, they are all positive numbers. So which means while we're increasing the side length, okay, while we're increasing the the side length, the the sum of the uh, the sum of the of each of the square will becoming bigger and and bigger, okay, and so that I mean when we reach the side length to a to a certain length, then the next one will be uh, then the next one will basically will will not satisfy our threshold here. That's why we can use the binary search because you know, if the, uh, let's say for example, if the uh, the numbers in the in this like 2D array, it's, it's, it, can be, it can be negative or either positive or, or negative. In that case, we cannot use binary search. So why is that? Because, because whenever we, uh, we increase or, or, or we decrease the, uh, the length of, of the square, we cannot be sure if the answer will go go to one way or the other, right? Because if if it has like a bigger number, uh, like a, if this has like a, a negative numbers, while we're increasing the length, we, we could even have get like a smaller number because we we might include more like negative number. So that in that case, we cannot use the the binary the binary search. But for this one, I mean, since it's like they're all positive number, and then we're we're sure that while we're increasing the side length, the sum of the of the square will only getting bigger and bigger. Okay. So, yeah, basically that's the first thing, right? And so once we have decided we want to use the binary search, the second thing we want to you you need to know is that how can you, I mean, quickly calculate. Uh, the sum of the square, right? I mean, brutal force way will always be like, with, with the current side length, we, we just loop through everything, right? We we calculate everything within this side, within the uh, this this range of the of the of the square, uh, with the length of the of the current length. But I think most of you have, must have known this, right? A better way is to uh, do a pre-calculation, a pre-sum of all the uh, basically. A, Pre-sum for 2D array. Okay, so how do we do a pre-sum of a 2D array? 
I think you guys all know how to do a prism of, of 1D array, right? Basically, for the 1D array, the current prism is just the current number plus the, the previously prism, okay? And with the 2D array, I, for those who, who don't know, I'll, I'll simply draw like uh, an example here. Uh, let's say we have 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2, and 3, 4, 2. Okay, so in order, let's say we, I want to calculate the uh, the prism of this one. Oh, one more thing, so when we calculate the 2D prisms, right, we start from from the bottom from the bottom right corner, so that we uh, at least I think you, you can either, you can do e either way, but for me I find, I figure out so doing it from bottom right corner is more intuitive, and then we uh, we just go backwards. So let's say, for example, if I want to calculate the prism for this one, okay, this is i and j, right? So how can we calculate the prism of this? Basically, what we are doing is that we're going to do a prism, right, of i pl plus 1j, prism of, of this one, okay, equals to prism of the i plus 1j plus the prism of the i j plus 1 minus, right, minus what? Minus the uh, the prism of the i plus 1 and j plus 1. Of course, we have to add the current number, okay, right, so that's that. So why is that? Because, you know, the i plus 1 j is, is, the, is, the, pre, is the sum of this part, okay, and the prism of i j j plus one is the prism of this part, and you guys can uh, have can see here this part had been added twice. That's why we uh, we we need to remove one set of this part from the uh, the equation, which is the i plus one j plus one. That's how we get the, the current prism. Cool. So I think that's, I think from here on we can start coding. Okay. Uh, okay. I will, I will explain a li little bit more. So how can we uh, utilize this 2D sum later on? But first, uh, let's see what we have here. We have, uh, we need to define a few like uh, variables here, like, right? Like the, the M and N here. Okay. And okay. So for the, uh, for the binary search template, right? So, so the smallest uh, value, basically the lower bound is zero, okay? And the upper bound, uh, the upper bound, what's the upper bound? Like I said, it's gonna be the minimum of M and N, okay? Because we need a square, that's why uh, the, the biggest square length, side length is, is the minimum value between the M and N, okay? And then uh, while left is smaller than right, okay? And then middle equals to uh, uh, left plus right minus left, and then divided by two. We do this like to avoid like uh, the the overflow, okay? Oops. And then uh, I'm gonna have like helper functions here, right? If you guys have seen some of all my other binary search videos, so basically that's one of the template, okay? Basically, if this helper function return us a true, right? It means that it, it satisfies our, our current condition. And since for this problem, you know, it asks us to find the, the maximum value. So remember, so whenever, every time when you, when it asks you to find the maximum numbers, we always do a left equals to, equals to, to middle. Okay. And then else we do a right equals to middle minus one. And on the other on the other side, if it asks you to find the minimum values, then we always uh, do the right equals to middle and the left equals to middle plus one. So why is that? I think it's kind of uh, easy self-explanatory, right? Be because let's say we're finding the maximum value, the maximum value that satisfy our conditions, right? I mean, if the current middle value are like the uh, 
satisfy the conditions. So we are trying to first, you know, the middle could be our answer, right? So that's why we, we cannot discard this middle. But meanwhile, we have to, basically we're trying to move as right as possible. That's why we do a, a left. Uh, with the, we, I mean, we sign the middle with the, with, I mean, with, with the left so that the left can be basically keep moving to the right side until it, it can't. Then we know, okay, the current left is our maximum value. And if for the, for to get the minimum value, right, same thing, right? We're, we're like assigning the middle to the right side because basically this is the right. And we're basically, we're trying to move the, the right pointer as, as to the, as left as possible. And by the time it couldn't move to the left side, and then we know we find the minimum value of that. Okay, cool. So, and then uh, in the end, like I said, we can we just uh, simply return the left here. Okay. And now the helper functions, right? So before doing that, let's try to uh, do a presum, right? Do a do 2D presum, okay. So, to do a 2D pre-sum, uh, let's see, uh, pre-sum uh, zero, okay, is the N4 in range M, okay. And, uh, and since we are going to start from the last, from the bottom right corners and we are going to do a i plus one and j plus one in order to make sure we're not going out of the boundaries i'm going to uh, define like uh, m plus one here and m plus one here so i'm doing this just uh i just as if i'm adding like a zero zeros i'm, I'm padding basically i'm padding this 2d array here so that when i calculate this e either th this Either this two or this two, I can. So the the element I'm using is not going to going out of the boundaries because it will go basically go to the zero here. Okay. Then like uh, we're going to start from the bottom right corner, which is the what? Which is the the m minus uh m minus one. Okay. And minus one, minus one. Okay, so that's the the i and j is in the range of the n minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay. So uh, basically, pre sum like i and j. Okay, equals to what? Equals to the pre sum. Sorry, first one is the current number, the mat uh, i and j, okay, plus pre sum uh, yeah, pre sum of the, uh, the i plus one j plus pre sum i j plus one and then we, we also need to remove one of the intersect re remove the intersection by once okay j plus one okay and see that's why we are going to use uh that's why i, I pad i padded this array here because when when the i plus one reaches out of the boundaries we can we'll simply re re return the zero here so it won't affect our result okay cool pretty Pretty easy, right? So this is how we pre-calculate the 2D uh, pre-sums. Now the helper functions here. Okay, so, and when it comes to the helper functions here, actually we are trying to like uh, exist, right? We're trying to see, okay, with the with the current like side length equal to middle, is equal to the middle here, can we find like a subarray? Sorry, can we find like a, a square whose sum is smaller or equal than the threshold. Okay, so in order to do that, we just need to loop through, try all the pos all the squares with the with the side length equals to the middle. And I, the the moment we we find like uh, a sum a set 
who is smaller than, than, than the threshold, we can simply return true. Otherwise, in the end, we, we simply return false. Okay, so cool. so that's going to be in the middle. And so for i in range what? Since the length is middle, right? So the 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 most the biggest i we can go go to is like the m minus middle plus one. Okay, because we we need to make sure we have enough uh, space for the square, right? Same thing for the j here in range of the n minus middle plus one. Okay. Now, okay. Now let's say we have a We have a four, three, two, four, three, two, and the four, three, two. Okay. So with this, let's say I want to calculate the sum of this range. And in this case, let's say the the middle is like the middle equals to two. Okay. So with this pre-sum, how can we calculate uh, the sum? of this part similar similar as how we pre calculate the prism at the beginning so what what do we do we uh well, let's say we, we have a few other numbers let's say we have one 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 here okay just make it more like readable here so the way we are calculating this part is that we are basically we're getting the the prism of this of this of this part here we're getting the prism of this one which is the what? Which is the, the prism of the, uh, the, so this one, this part is like the, the I plus middle. Sorry, this one, sorry, it's not I plus middle, it's the, uh, the, it's the other way. So it's the I J plus middle, okay? And we minus this, we subtract that, and we also subtract this, this part, which is the what? The, the P is the, I plus middle and J. Okay, same thing. We we subtract this part twice, then we just need to add it back. P like I plus middle and then J plus middle. Yeah, that's it. That's how we uh, quickly calculate the the square sum by using the pre sum. Uh, re, uh, re, pre sum result. Cool. So yeah, like I said, so gonna be uh if basically so if the uh the pre sum right the pre sum i and j minus pre sum i j plus middle okay minus pre sum I plus middle equals to J and plus pre sum I plus middle and then J plus middle. Okay, and then if this thing is equal smaller than the threshold, okay, and then we simply re return true. Okay, we can simply return here, otherwise, in the end, we, re we return false. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's that that's all I think. Yeah, let's try to run it here. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think one more thing. I think uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Since we're doing that, like, since every time you know when I when we use a template where we sign the middle to the left, instead of uh, doing the this thing, so we have to do a, a right uh, plus plus one here so that it won't uh, end up in the infinite loop here. I think I have explained this one uh, a few times in my other in my other videos, but I, anyway, I'll explain it one more time. So the reason being is that let's say we have a left equals to three and the right equals to four. In this case, if we don't have a plus one here, the middle will be what? The middle will be three here. Sorry, what am I? So the middle will be three. And and once this middle exists is equal to true here, we assign the middle, we're, we're assign the middle to the uh, uh, to left, which means the left will equal will become to three again, and, uh, and then when it comes when it comes back, the middle will basically it will 
every time it will uh, align uh, sign this left with three and basically it will end up with an infinite loop. That, that's why, I mean, every time we have a left equals to middles, we have to do a, a, do a plus one here so that when, when, when this one equals to three here, we just, uh, it will just uh, uh, become to, instead of three, it will become to, to four. Okay. This is just to avoid uh, the middle becomes the left, will be the same as the left. Uh, all right. So let's try to run the code here. Me, oh, sorry. It's a typo here. And cool. So the test case passed. Let's try to submit it. Cool. So yeah. So it's accepted. I mean, this one is a pretty like straight classic or straightforward binary search. I mean, it's not that hard to come up with the binary search. I mean, the one thing is that you have to be able to be careful about this left and the plus one and to make sure you're not like and uh, stuck end up in an infinite loop and the second thing is that uh, since the uh, the m and n is like uh, 300 i don't think that's a big big input but uh, still right i mean you want to utilize the pre the prism a uh, 2d prism so that you can uh, uh, quickly calculate the the the, the, uh, the sum of the square yeah, I think that's it for this problem. Yeah, and thank you so much uh, for watching the videos, guys. And stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.